I have saved my 60 plus minutes in Power BI development. Yes, you heard it right. Because of this latest update from Microsoft, I have I am able to save almost like 60 plus minutes of my Power BI development. So now you may wonder about how. If you are in search of the following functionalities, then definitely you will also save like this 60 plus of time. Whether it is if you are trying to use measure as a slicer or if you are going to use column level security or dynamic column selection, dynamic x-axis, dynamic multiple filters or if you are using too many big moths and you want to avoid that. If your answer for all this question is yes, then this video is for you and please watch this video till then because there are lots of new updates here. So I just want to cover all the things in detail. Before going into that, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now let's get started. I am into my Power BI desktop and I have installed this latest update of May 2022 and after that I just need to go to file, options and settings and options. The new preview feature I need to enable that which is here the field parameters. This is the new feature which they have released and if I enable that then I am going to get an option of here at the new parameter if you look at this one the new parameter option if I click here under the modeling tab new parameter usually it was like numeric range itself previously and now they have added as a new which is the field here. If you click on fields here then this will open up a new window if you select on the numeric range also, here you will get the old previous menu. You can select any of this one and after that you can switch it to fields here. So you will get this new window here. So let me zoom this here. I will explain you what are the things it has here. So parameters, add parameters to visuals and DAX expressions. So people can use slicer to adjust the input and see different outcomes. So here I'm going to select the fields here. So basically we need to give it a name here and from this, this is actually the list of available table columns and measures. It will show up here and now we need to use here. So here I am going to use the first of all, I am going to use the two measures which I have used here, which is basically the regular measure. I am going to use this sum of quantity here and also the sales amount. This is basically two measures are here. And I'm going to give it a name here, quantity and sales amount. Quantity and sales. So this will be actually create as a table name, as a calculated table. And I'm going to enable this option, add a slicer to this page and then click create. Even if you don't select that add slicer to this page, that is also totally fine. So once you click on that, it actually creates a calculated table. If you see on the right side, it has added a new table quantity and sales. And if I click on this table and go to this formula bar, I can see this quantity and sales and it has created a new table with the column name and the new function of the DAX, which is the name of, and this is the measure which is come up here. And zero one is nothing but the sequence of the column. So if I go to this data tab here, and I'm selected to this table itself, right? This is basically the one which is created quantity and sales. And you can see it has added as quantity here and sales amount here. And this is the measure name, basically quantity and sales, quantity and sales field here. And this is the sequence of order here. If you want to change the name here, basically I'm going to change the name here to be quantity and also about the sales. quantity and sales and click on commit. It actually also changes the name of the column, not the column, the name of the detail inside to this. Yeah, you can see the changes here. Now, if I'm going to add this here in a table, so also in the slicer also it has changes the value. I'm going to add a table here. In this table, I'm going to use this one, quantity and sales. This will actually add me the two columns here, quantity and sales separate here. 
and if i'm going to add any of these like uh, if i'm going to add the year of the calendar year so this will basically add the calendar year from the calendar table and also it will also calculate the quantity and sales measure respectively now if i select anything on this slicer like if i just want to now if i just want to show only the quantity i can just click on the quantity this table will filter and show me only the quantity and if i select on the sales it will also filter the same thing here see here it is now filtered to quantity and if i select to the sales it just will also filter and give me only the sales data here and if i give it to both here then i can able to see both the values here so here what we observed here right now is we have used this slicer as a filter one thing right and the next thing what we have used here if you are going to adopt the row level security i mean the column level security then you can able to easily uh, let's say for an example you have a scenario that you want to show only the quantity column for a certain people you don't want to show the sales amount column if that's the case then you can easily adopt this method and you can apply the row level security so let me quickly create a role here modeling and then i can click on manage role here and i'm going to create a new role and give it a name as quantity i'm going to look for this table the newly created table quantity and sales and here add filter this is the first column and i'm going to give it name here quantity and click on save now if i click on view role as but before that i just want to clear the selection from this slicer okay now clicking on view as role so here i'm going to select the quantity and click on okay now this is viewing as a quantity role and hopefully this should filter both this quantity and sales from here is one now you can see the slicer also has changed and showing only the quantity here and also the table is showing only the quantity here so this really helpful right you can also control the column level security here easily and also you can um, give the selections to the end user from this point and also if you have the multiple tables i mean multiple columns in a table and you just want to give the users to control and to select what are the columns they need on to their report then this is really an awesome way so let me quickly create one more thing and there is no edit option for this one for an example uh, you can't able to go and edit in the same window but as it is being created as a table calculate table so we can directly go here and if you want to add something else then you can just click on add here and then if i open bracket double here i am going to use product count just for an example and here name of open bracket and here i can just use my measure if required just double click double quote here and count of product and then close the bracket comma 2 here i just need to give the sequence here and close the bracket so this is actually not a correct way i just need to use the column name here and here this should be english product name okay and comma 2 yeah this is the one and i need to close this name of also i need to close here comma 2 yeah this is the way so now what will happen is if i click on commit this will actually create one more record here and also if you see you can also see one more column here as product count so now we got an error about only measures or fully qualified column reference are allowed in the name of so we can't able to directly write the measure here that's a good thing we are aware of that uh, we just need to create a measure and then we need to use that measure inside to this one right so we can't directly you write the measure inside to this one so we have product count product count category this kind of measures with us so i'm going to use this product count measure inside to this one itself instead of writing a separate measure i'm going to use the product count here so product count so this is basically the product count here and close this one and commit 
And now you can see the product count is one more column is added here and also I can able to see this product count here. Even though the measure is not actually working fine because I error in the measure itself. I'm not going to look into that part but I just want to highlight to you is we can able to easily create additional column inside to that. Okay now I just want to create quickly one more thing here uh, which is basically I'm going to modeling tab again and new parameter and this is a numeric range not actually it has to be a field so here i'm going to select a uh, calendar year and then sales territory sales territory group here and also category name english product category name so here i'm going to give it a name as year territory category okay and click on create so now this will actually create another table as a calculated table inside to this one and also it will add a slicer onto the page so here at the end we have this year territory category as a table and also you can see it on the formula bar it is created as calendar year sales territory group english product category name so by default it will create the actual column name or measure name as here the row name itself but if you want to edit we can also edit here so i'm going to keep this calendar year as calendar year and this is to be sales territory group which is the easily readable name and for product category we can just keep as category name and then click on ok so once we do so it will also make an effect on to this one and the good thing is we can use both these calculator tables as a slicer i can use this quantity and sales and also the year territory ca category table both at the same time so for an example if i just want to filter show you the only quantity and i want to also filter this by sales territory group If I have anything then I can also do that. So let me just quickly convert this into a matrix. So I'm going to add this uh, quantity and sales as a column here, calendar year as a row. I'm going to add this quantity and sales as a value here. So so let me repeat this one so i just added a matrix table here and added this calendar year as a row here and added this quantity sales as a values here now i'm going to use this one which is i have added a new fields parameter this into row section and closing this row here so now we have this calendar year and everything right so if i drill down further then this will be work as an hierarchy for us so calendar year sales territory group and pacific if i just change this to a column here now i can see everything here and if i just scroll down hierarchy so it beautifully scroll down everything here now the good part is if i just want to show only the category if i select here category then this will filter everything and it will show us only the category on the matrix here and if i want to the sales territory group also then it will just show me that sales territory group sales here. This is a kind of dynamic column headers or dynamic value changes in the table, right? And if I just want to sales territory group and category name, then this will work as an hierarchy and this can easily give me those values here. If I just scroll drill down, then it shows us Europe and these are the things which I have it here. Right, amazing. So if you're going to add one more thing uh, as a parameter and if you want to add it as a row section here, that will be a really amazing thing. Then we can have multiple drill down options on the row, also on the columns. If, if you want, you can just try it out. So the thing which I mentioned about this here, the functionality about this here is measure as a slicer. Yeah, we can do that. Column level security, we can do that. Dynamic column selections, we can do that. Dynamic X axis, so this I want to show there. So dynamic filtration also I have covered here. So here, so the one thing which I want to highlight again is basically there was a situation like there was a requirement from the business that they want to 
they want the business to give the selection of the columns whatever the user want to look into the table here so they have very large table which want to show it on this page so the visibility of this area is very less and even they don't want to keep the scroll bars in that at that time we can just give these options if this has a multiple like 30 40 columns and they want to look into uh, any kind of information you can just add this information as like how i'm showing it now and you can give them the selection here option here so whatever the column they are going to select here it's going to display it on to this table visual and also this everything is fine here if you look at this one right now this is a plain table and i'm filtering it to be calendar year and i just want the category name here and also i have filtered it to only show the quantity here this is really an amazing thing right i can just able to see calendar year category name and quantity here so multiple filter selections also done and uh, dynamic multiple filters and the only thing which it remains i think is dynamic x-axis okay so now let me just keep these two slicer on the left side and convert this chart into a regular stock bar chart so now this is x-axis everything is on x-axis so i'm just moving this into x-axis and y-axis so let me just use this stack column chart and now you can see 2011 12 and 13 this is the number of records we have and if i just drill down further this will beautifully just give me the information about each and every year and each and every category here because i just filtered it to be show only the year and category here and filtered only to show the quantity here if i also select the sales from this one then this will also give me these two informations about the same thing right now this has a much more difference so i'm not able to see this here but if i just convert this into a clustered column chart so let me just convert this here now hopefully i can able to see if you see this one i can see able to see some values here as the sales has a much more higher in value so i'm not able to see this information here this is totally fine so let me remove this one so here uh, if i just want to see only the sales territory group here i can able to see that only for the calendar year i can also see that and only for the category that's also possible here so this is how you can able to do these multiple selections also on the x-axis in the chart visual here so now itself you might have wonder about there are many things which i have shown here and a lot of things requires too many bookmarks to create all those things like if you want to do this kind of things in a measure or if you want to do everything the filtration and everything so all these things majority of these steps you need to use the bookmark here so by using this field level parameter you can easily avoid using too many bookmarks here so uh, now i hope that you are also agree that we can save 60 plus minutes by using this functionality so i have given the example of whatever i know about that i came on my experience so far so if you have something new on this let me know in the comment section below if you like this video just click on the big thumbs up button if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications but make sure to turn on the notification on your devices share it with your friends and colleagues if you have any queries and feedback just post it on the comment section below thanks for watching keep learning see you in the next video